everyone, Tracy here with Paper Closet Designs. In today's video, I have two brand new dome candy card holders that I want to share with you. Now, these are perfect for back to school, but they also would work really well for 100 days of school, teacher appreciation, end of school, uh, school parties. They would also work great for fall or birthdays or for kids for any occasion. They're just fun and really simple. To start off to make these, you will need a Christmas, a plastic Christmas ornament. And I just buy mine at Michael's or on Amazon in the bulk. If you're gonna do a lot of these, I would suggest doing them in, at Amazon in bulk. Um, the craft stores will carry these year round. But especially at Christmas time, they start to really stock up. And so it's the end of August. And when I was at Hobby Lobby the other day, they were already putting out some of their Christmas stuff. And you can get these as well already. So when you find them, if you decide that you want to use these, I would get a bunch of them and stock up. You'll need one half per card. So I've got one over here that I've already opened up. The two halves and you'll use one per each card. Now also something to note is that with my domes, these have a back opening and there's two different types of back opening. You'll have one that has a pull tab or one that has a dial that you spin. And I'll show both of those to you as we are um, building this up. But each card comes with both options. So if you like the pull tab, doesn't matter which card you you do. If you like the dial back, doesn't matter which card you use. They are both available. And then one more piece of information. Um, I know that some of you have reached out to me and you are doing smaller holes. Your domes are either smaller or you found like the cupcake uh, uh, containers so that you don't have to have the backs but they are smaller. I do have a video on my YouTube channel that shows you how to resize all of this so that it will fit those smaller domes and makes everything work. So I'll put a link to that as well. So today we are going to do an apple with the caterpillar and a crayon box. I'm going to do the apple first because it's a little bit easier and that one we are going to do the pool tab. So on the apple, we have, let me show you the pieces and then we will assemble it as we go along. We have our little caterpillar. I cut him out of green. And we have our leaf and I cut him out of a darker green. I have the frame that I cut out of a darker red. And then this little, it looks like a crescent moon. That is actually the whole cover for where the caterpillar is climbing out of the apple. And I also cut it out of a darker red. We have the top layer is our apple, and it has the circle and the hole that our caterpillar is climbing out of. The next layer is our apple with the stem, and it has a hole and um, where the caterpillar is also climbing out of. And this one you will want to cut out of whatever color you want your stem. The stem is the only piece that's gonna show on this, but it adds strength to the card. This back one, um, I cut it out of black. The only thing that's gonna show is the antennas on the caterpillar and then the hole that he's gonna climb out of. So I cut this one out of black. And then last but not least, on this one, because we're doing the pool tab, um, you have your piece with the pool tab. Now, if you are doing the dial back, you'll have this piece right here with a half circle cut out, and then you'll have a piece that goes on the back, and you'll have a dial. And I will show you the dial when we do the crayon box. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this piece and you're going to take your next biggest back piece and line it up. You want this circle where the dome's gonna go over um, the pool tab, and this is all cut out with perforations. So don't worry about matching everything up on this side perfectly. I've made it extra big so that it'll work. You want to just line it up over that. And now we're going to take our marker, or our pencil, excuse me, and we're just going to trace that circle 
all the way around so that we know where to put our, um, our dome. Okay, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna take this back piece, the, the pull tab, and I'm just gonna kind of bend it a little bit. I'm not bending it all the way back, but just a little bit so that the receiver knows that that's where they're gonna grab it and pull it. When we're doing the pull tab, you have to fill your, um, your dome first. So I've just got some six lips. And I'm gonna dump those in there. I'm going to lay this on here. I don't want this tab of the ornament to be the same place as the pool tab on the card. So I'm going to kind of turn it a little bit so that it's not right on there. I'm going to just flip that over and then I can turn it and line it up so that it is lined up right on that circle. There's the hang tab of the ornament and there's the pool tab on the card. They're not lined up. Next, we're gonna take some glue gun. Now you want a hot glue gun. The low temperature does not work. This is a brand new glue gun from Cricut. I just got it and I thought I would try it. We'll see how it goes. All you're gonna do is you're gonna run a bead of glue all the way around your dome. Don't get it on the tab. on the pool tab of the card. And you want a fairly good layer here. Okay, now I'm just gonna set that off to the side to cool down and to dry. Let's go ahead and build up our apple. So the first thing, I've turned all of these upside down. So the first thing is we've got this black piece and now we're going to take our brown piece, which is the stem only, and we're gonna glue it or tape it right on to there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna take my tape runner in the big spots. And then I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna just put some glue on the stem and kind of along the bottom. You can use one or the other or a combination of both of the glue and the tape. And now this one lines up exactly. There's no shadow behind it. So let's start and get that stem piece. We're gonna do the same thing with our red piece. It's gonna go right on there. So I'm going to put some tape and some glue on it. When you are doing these, you want something that is about three or four layers. Otherwise, whoops, otherwise it's not very sturdy depending on what you put in your dome. So if you're putting something really heavy, you want more layers. I do have a couple that only have like two or three layers, but most of them have at least three and maybe four. Okay, so now let's take our red piece of our apple and again, just lay it on there. And now we can go ahead and add it to our back piece. That's pretty dry, it's not going anywhere. At this point, you're gonna add this on here and you can either add it with just glue or tape and tape it down. Because this tab is raised, I like to use foam tape on mine. I just buy my foam tape on the roll. I think it's a lot more economical to do it that way. So I'm gonna turn my back over and I'm just gonna cut some pieces. You don't need a ton of this, but you do want it so that it's not moving. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but there are different thicknesses of foam tape. 
I think this is the quarter inch, I think. Um, when I do cards and stuff, I usually do the eighth or the sixteenth. And this is, maybe this is the eighth. And I'm going to put a little tiny piece right up there at the top of the stem. A little tiny piece under the, the head of the caterpillar and a little tiny piece right there. So let's just cut two more really small ones. I'm going to move the back in. The younger kids love these. They're fascinated with them. And the adults enjoy them too. They're, they're just lots of fun. Okay, so now I'm going to just kind of put that on there. Okay. And I'm going to take my leaf. And I'm actually going to put just a little bit of foam tape on this edge and then some regular glue on the bottom because it's going to be lifted up on here. Next up, let's take our little caterpillar guy and his little eyes are cut out because they're also going to show through on the black. That's why that piece really should be cut out of a dark, dark color. It's the antennas, the hole that he's crawling out of, and his face. Let's take this little crescent moon which is just kind of over the hole. Oh, and we want to get glue right on those edges there. And then the frame, which is an optional piece. You don't need to put this frame on yours if you don't want to, but I kind of like the way that it finishes it off. And there we go. There's our little apple with the dome. What teacher, what little kid would not enjoy that treat? And this one has the pool tab in the back. So they just pull it open to get the candy or the money or the little pair of socks or whatever it is that you decide to put in there. Okay, the second one that we're going to do is the crayon box. This one is a little bit bigger, but we're going to do the pool tab on this one. Now I will show you all of the pieces because I also cut the pool tab. Let me back up. We're gonna do the dial back on this one, but I have cut all of the pieces out so that you can see what we've got. This one is a little bit bigger and there's a few more pieces, but it's still not difficult to do. So I have the two little corners that I cut out of black and the frame. This is the decorative front. That is your front piece. Then we have the back piece with all the crayon pieces. So if I were to flip this over, um, let's just do it. There's all of your crayon pieces. Each crayon has three pieces. And I cut the actual crayon out of a darker color than the paper. This is your crayon piece, and it's just cut from black. This, whatever you cut, cut this out, is going to show through on your crayon pieces. And then you have the back. So this one is the pool tab. We're not gonna do the pool tab on this one, so I'm gonna set it aside. We're going to do the dial back. So here is the piece for the dial back. It has the um, window cut out and a place for your brad. 
the dial, the two washers, which are very, very important, and then the final back piece. If you're doing the dial back, you will also need some regular brads, just regular book brads. And you can pick these up almost anywhere, your grocery store, Target, Walmart, you'll need one of those. So let's go ahead and do the dial piece first. So we're going to bring up our back piece, remove those out of the way. And then I'm going to bring my black piece and it goes right along the bottom. We're gonna match it up right along the bottom and on the edges. Take your pencil and we're gonna trace that circle. That is where we're going to glue the um, dome to. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is Get those out of the way. We're going to take the final back piece and we're gonna flip it over. And then we're going to take our brad and we're gonna poke it up through there. Just like that. I'm gonna turn it so the prongs open up this way. Next, you'll need one of your washers. Then your dial piece. Oops, another washer. And your back piece. And you wanna make sure that the circle that you, that you traced is facing towards you. We're gonna layer that and we're gonna open up the brads. Okay. Now we need to flip it over and straighten this out and we need to glue along the edge of this back piece. Don't glue along the bottom. Do not glue along this bottom, but we want to glue all the way around here. Let's get out my glue. I'm gonna sit down so I can see what I'm doing. And I just lift it up and I'm gonna put glue right along the edge. You do not want to get it too close to the wheel because then the wheel won't spin. Now on this top piece, because it's so long and away from the wheel, you could tape that down if you wanted to. Um, it might give it a little bit more strength if you did that. I'm just going to go ahead and glue it. And then along this side as well. some glue. Leave that down. And then we want to make sure that our dial opens and closes just by spinning it. If it does not spin, then one of two things has happened. The first is you most likely did not um, use your washers. If the washers aren't in there, it won't spin. If the washers are in there and it's still not spinning, check your glue and make sure that you didn't get glue too close to um, the dial because if that paper is glued down too tight, then it won't work. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and close this up and flip it over. Let's add our dome. So I'm gonna take my other dome and I'm gonna lay it on here. And I'm just going to add that glue all the way around the dome. You wanna make sure that you don't get any glue where the uh, dial is. Make sure that's right on there. When you're doing the dial back, you don't have to fill it first because we can open it up and fill it from the behind, from the back. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna go ahead and build up the crayon box. So we're gonna start with our black 
And then we are going to add our crayon pieces. Now, like I said, I don't know how well you can see this on the camera. Let me bring the purple down. I did the purple paper out of a lighter color and the crayon out of a shade darker of each color. You don't have to do that. You could do it all out of the same shade and then maybe just ink that or um, it, it really doesn't matter. So we're gonna start with the top piece, the actual crayon piece. We're gonna glue it on there. And then we're gonna take this rectangle and we're gonna glue it with just a little bit of the black showing through. Just a teeny tiny bit, doesn't need to be a ton. And then we can take our paper And if you'll notice, it's a little bit wider at the top than on the bottom. You want that, that thinner piece to go on the bottom. It doesn't really matter. It's not gonna make that big of a difference. But if you do them all going in the same direction, you'll be a little bit happier. So there's our purple crayon. Next, let's do blue. You could do your crayons in any color that you want. You can put them in any order that you want. And if you want to fast forward through this part of the video while I'm just layering these up, I'm kind of trying to line up all my rectangles. And there should be a little bit of a black space between the two crayons. And next we're gonna do green. And the rectangle. This card does have a few more pieces than most of my dome cards do, but I like them to look kind of realist, realistic and have a little bit of detail. So this one does have a few more pieces. orange. You could do this all in pastels. If your person likes pastels, you could do it all in really bright colors. You could do it in fall colors, Christmas colors. Um, possibilities are endless with this little card. It's so fun. Don't worry too much about what the bottom looks like of the crayons because they're going to be covered up. I think my little granddaughter that thinks she's an artist would love this for her birthday. I'm giving her a craft box and I think I might just stick this as the card to go to the craft box. Every time she comes to my house, she wants to play in grandma's room because I have all the fun stuff. All right, once that's done, we're going to take this yellow piece and we are going to just lay it right on top of there and glue it down. Now, if your crayon is showing through on your circle, you can trim that up if you want to. Mine is just barely peeking through, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But if it's bothering you or if it's really hanging down, you might want to just trim that up. And I'm gonna 
take my glue and make sure that we get glue right along this edge here. Okay, let's line that up along the bottom and the sides. Okay, now we can take this decorative piece and we're gonna glue it down. And this piece does have a frame. I cut an optional frame that you can use, but you don't have to if you don't want to, because this piece also has that frame around it. And we have the little corners. And now we can add this to our card. So you can, once again, you can glue it down or you can foam pop dot it, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just turn it over and I'm gonna put, I'm not gonna worry about the tops of these pieces. I'm gonna do kind of a long piece right along here. And then a couple down the sides. centered. There we go. Okay, and now I can take my frame and add it on there, or you can leave it off. Your decision. I'm going to go ahead and add it on, just because I've already got it cut out. And then to fill it, we're gonna flip it over and turn the dial piece. And I've got some gumballs. Probably have to put something different in here when I give it to my granddaughter. If I gave her all this gumballs, her mother would kill me. dome card. Isn't that fun? Thank you for joining me today. I want to explain two things on here as far as the back openings go and may, why you may want one over the other. Um, like I said in the beginning, each card has both back variations, so you can choose. The pull tab works for children or older people that have a little bit of dexterity issues because it's just really super easy to open. The drawback on this one is that once it's opened, um, it kind of tears your card apart. This one with the dial back is reusable. You can take a few pieces of candy out, close it up, you can reuse the card. But the spinning is a little bit harder for children with small hands. I know my granddaughter and, well, actually, most of my grandkids kind of struggle with this one. At least the younger ones do. So both backs are great. You can choose which one you want. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my videos. And have a great day.